John Cage has actually visited the place Riranji in Kyoto, Japan's old capital. Subsequently, he started making drawings in a field of the visual arts, applying chance operations with pebbles, little stones, which he put on papers and with different degrees of pencils, he followed their shapes. With this he was referring to the 15 stones in the actual Rianji, with the result of a quite voluminous series of drawings, later etchings, called R is Rianji, on sale in well-assorted galleries. If you now imagine the segments of curves applied by chance operations, to be put on blank squares to be used as sheet music, then you are quite close to how the actual score of Rianji looks like. And if you think of the different degrees of the pencils, then you can imagine how John Cage came to choose recordings of each one instrument to perform Rianji being applied. There exist a number of solo versions. The first one was for oboe. We chose flute, which are all accompanied by a percussionist. A percussionist, and John Cage puts this quite clearly to represent the raked sand of the Rianji garden, with the composer adding to be performed as if the lights shining on it would subtly change. There's in fact a great deal of liberty left to the performers and the performing circumstances. This goes as far as John Cage indicating that the relationship between the pre-recorded and the live performed sounds in Glissandi needn't be observed too strictly. But there's, of course, as always with John Cage, this ambiguity between apparent freedom and actually the existence of strict rules ultimately resulting in the piece of art. So yes, he goes for unintentiousness and abandoning the individual will and attention of the composer, but at the same time to gain these very qualities, it is very helpful to go quite far and possibly beyond the limits of your instrument. There's strictness in the piece, but also a, to me, quite appealing relaxedness, even a bit languid. To perform the piece outdoors in a somewhat Japanese look-alike placement is our artistic freedom. We are referring here to Claude Debussy, who has his Monsieur Croche dream of unparalleled performance qualities in the open air, along vast alleys of trees, in rich landscapes, providing richer and more natural musical qualities than even the most refined concert hall. I personally think that it might be a good idea to confront this obviously utopian thinking with our reality we live in daily. Which is one of the reasons for our Cherry Blossom concert. Eichel Gallery and BCMG have a long-standing relationship and it's very lively. And lovely as well. Jonathan Watkins and I regularly exchange on future planning. Sometimes it's not that easy to find common ground and common opportunities 
to share events. In this case, it was. It was uh, as by nature. Further in his opening speech, Jonathan mentioned that Icon was cooperating also with the Hayward Gallery in London, who the same day as Icon opened their exhibition Among the Trees. <laughs> 